out of here. And it basically says I've got a resistor R equals 100 ohms. I've got a uh, inductor L equals 60 uh, millis, right? This is just the formula out of number six on AC theory level four, lesson one. And your capacitor is 100, the capacitance, 100 pico farads. Okay. If you don't have this sheet from earlier in the AC series, I have more of these sheets here, right? These are the ones that have the symbols. They have the, the um, exponents. Anybody want one right off? Take one. Okay. Visited my mom for lunch yesterday, and if it's for free, she would uh, be ashamed I'll if I didn't one. take it, right? I have one, it's just... Okay, yeah. well, if it's for free, my mom's taking it, maybe no one. Yeah, perfect. There you go. Okay, you should. You may have one from the past, you may not. You got it somewhere there? Okay, you got it. Perfect. Yeah, so the thing is, we're going to use all our exponents here, as you can tell. From, the, from giga down to pico, okay? So we have this here, and question number six basically asks, do you, uh, it says true or false question, is the resonant frequency for this cir uh, circuit, resonant frequency 2.056 mega, Hertz. Is that what it asked me? It's a true false question. Yeah, 2.056. So how do we figure out resonant frequency? Oh, oh, put a put, 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 put. That's down in the bottom. All right, it's at 1 over 2 pi, this whole circular thing, pi is already always stuck in there. The LC. Right? Again, if you have difficulty with those, always hit me up with break or stick around after class. We'll go through all the math you need. Okay. But if you come up with that, it's a true false question. And you're going to find out you may not get money on with that. It depends whether you use the pi button or you use 3.14. Doesn't matter. We're kind of doing it together here. I think it's originally done with 3.14. But you guys get something like that? What's mega? Millions, right? If I punch in that formula, I want to get something in the millions. If you don't, ask me why. I'll help you figure it out. Okay. Next question six. And then we get going, and we want to look at, I'm not going to follow exactly which question numbers it is, but I'm going to go through this sheet I gave you, and we're going to look at these values at resonant frequency. We're going to draw out what are those different values on the chart. And basically, most of this lesson is all these squares on this chart. So like I say, we're going to go through a line ourselves. We'll maybe two, probably two lines we'll go through ourselves. I'll talk a little bit about zero frequency, which is DC, and infinity, which is, again, theoretical. And I'll give you the answers to the rest of it, right? And I get it. And I'm sorry, but it is a bunch of data entry, right? You've got to take that number and put it in. Take that number and put it in. So lemonade from lemons, right? While you're doing that, just remember, I'm glad I'm an electrician, not a data entry clerk. So you know that if, if you've got to find something to be thankful for while you do that. Okay? Uh, i got a question. Yeah. How did you type it into your calculator? Okay. The way I do this is... Did you use parentheses for multiplying? Yeah, so. Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll show you where that's a problem. Okay, so the way I type it, right, some people just do the bottom and then once they get the answer, do the inverse to get the whole thing. But I, I split that inverse thing by going one divided by and then I open a parentheses. I type in two, pi button, then you do second function, mm -hmm. square root, right? It's over just the left of the seven and you get something that looks like this. So I put in L, which zero point, you don't have to put the zero, but I put it to clarify. 
Is that 60 millis? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I use the times button here. If you close parentheses and open them again, the square root stops where you close the parentheses. If yeah. you want to use parentheses, you would have to open another one for your first number and then open another for the second. But what I would do is one divided by open parentheses, two pi, second function, square root gives me that 0 0.060 millis. I always just write out. These are all the way over to pico, and 100 picos basically means nine zeros. Nano's nano, but that's 100, right? Because I, you could do times this, 0. Point, see how this is the pico? Milli, micro, nano, pico. 100, right? That's 100th place, 10th place, 1th place. So 0. 0.90s and then that, you could do it, or you could put times 100, second function, double E key, which is the one just above the seven, right? It has double E on the blue. You'll only get one E up top. And then picos are minus how many? How many places do I move the decimal point? 12. To get 100, I gotta move it 12 for pico. Three for milli, six for micro, nine for nano, right? Nano, nano, 12 for pico. So then I have to do negative, which is the button under the three that has the parentheses, and then I do one, two, equals. You can close parentheses if you want. Try, try either that way or instead of this block here, right? I'm putting that 26. See, I got like .649. Oh, 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 if you're using a, an iPhone, it's going to be a little different. I got this guy if you want to. Do you have one of these normally? I do, yeah. Feel free to use this guy. I got it. Yeah. What did you get, Megan? Yeah, I got like .6. Okay, let me use the arrow to go across there and yeah. see what we... Six times, and then I just did nine zero. Oh, did you have a decimal point before then? Oh, you know you, what? You gotta have a decimal point in front of them. Oh yeah, probably Try get the right answer. Yeah. 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 yeah, you can do it another way than that. Oh, it should be negative twelve. Because what you did is you sent the decimal point um, the other direction. Yeah. So. And it's that, yeah, correct, it's that negative under the three. Yours come out right? Something like that. Um, do I not need this initial parentheses? But I don't see that one. Why that one? No, no, no. That, that ain't going to make any difference. Um, why are we not doing this? Yeah, yeah. Let, let me just try it. Let me try it out here. I'm gonna make sure what am I what am I getting wrong here on my one divided by four parentheses two pi. Since I got them glasses that got the multiple thing, you know that 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 thing. When I look at that, non a milli, non a milli in Miami, in Miami. Uh, <laughs> Now if we try it, so this has an extra three zeros, or you do the, you know, the, the 60, second function, second, double E, 
negative six. Now try it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And this is the formula to find the resonant frequency? Resonant frequency. And then, oh man. Okay, well, you know, that's, 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 that's on me. There's no way around that. True is the answer. True, now do you get two million? Yeah. <laughs> now I'd love to stand up and tell you, now this was just to give you all a real good practice on how to enter all that, right? But I'm not gonna lie to you. I goof. Okay, you with me? We get two million something, we get two million something? I don't know yet. Okay. Oh well. Oh, you know oh I was gonna say, and how was your day? And I screwed up. That's okay. And that's micro Henry's? Yeah. Um, micro Henry's. Micro Henry's. I micro mean. Henry's, right? We'll get the Hertz over here. Oh, I'm glad we caught it now. Otherwise, you guys are right, Millie and I'm out to lunch. Micro. Oh, we did it um, right there. That X minus one. So just hit that button. Yeah. 2.05. And because we use the pi button, we get like 5.48, something like that. Had we use 3.14, we get closer to 5.6. It's 2 million something there. Yeah, the numbers. Yep, it's 2 million 56,000 because that's my mega. My mega takes my 2.056. Right, and you've got a bunch of different digits in there. So that's where I do it, okay? Okay, I'm over it. There's redemption, we move ahead. Okay, thank you for your patience. Sorry for my uh, mess up there. But a micro turned milli is no good. Okay, there we're good. Okay, love it. Now we're up to date. So without even using numbers, but we're going to do them anyway, at that frequency, 2.56 million, right? I've got to turn this into an XL and an XC. Okay, R stays the same, doesn't care what the frequency is. Pick whichever one you want to do. And, and shout out an answer for one or the other for me. I'll make a plan here now. Either two pi for life or one over two pi for cats. Do whichever's harder for you. Pico on the bottom, micro on the top. Got a 774.59 ohms for your XL. Okay, perfect. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna adjust it slightly to the blended learning number, right? Because we're dealing with rounding here and there. Okay, XL, anybody get XC? Pretty much the same. An XC blended learning wanted to see 774.5 ohms. Okay? Now, the reason they have a difference in there, because you're expecting exactly the same, is that we rounded on this number, right? We rounded a little on this number, so that's going to make a little bit of a difference. But is it effectively 775 and 775? Isn't that what resonant frequency in when this vector and this one are the same length?
I'm just going to write round numbers up here. So what's the total Z of the circuit? Do we need to do any math to figure out the Z of the circuit? We're assuming that equals that, the total ohms of the circuit. Should be 100, right? That's all that's left. Z equals R at resonant frequency. Okay. And my total current, well, for that we need the uh, applied voltage, 75 volts. Okay. Got it, total current. What do you say I got there, Derek, for total current? If I got volts and ohms? 0.75. Yeah. Volts divided by ohms give me 0.75 amps. And I got 0.75 amps, 0.75 amps, 0.75s, right? Whatever leaves here, it's got to go the whole way through and do its thing. OK? Perfect. What's the next in my column? Voltage drops. If I know the amps here, the amps here, the amps here, because of space, I'm not going to fill that in. But if you guys want to calculate that, James, can you get me my voltage drop on the inductor? Kevin, if you've got my resistor, please, and Chris, my uh, capacitor. Here? Yeah. Yeah. Were you just waiting for him to calculate it out? What did you end up getting? No, the same thing. 580, what's my um, blended learning number? 581, excuse me. 581 volts. 581 volts. That makes sense, right? Because does the inductive voltage point up and the capacitive one point down? They cancel each other out. And at perfect resonance, these guys are dancing a little voltage back and forward between them. Okay. So at resonance, the full voltage drops on the resistor. Because this guy and this guy are acting like a short circuit. So I get the full voltage drop. As I change resonance either direction, what's going to happen to Z? If I increase frequency or I decrease it, what happens to Z? It's going to increase. It's going to increase, right? Because if I increase frequency, XL gets bigger and XC gets smaller. If I decrease frequency, the other way around. So either way, it creates a net reactance here or a net reactance here. And then my resistor stays the same, so now I've got to do Pythagoras with whatever this or this is. Right, so my Z is going to either start going there, and it's going to get longer as well as pointing up with an increase in frequency, get longer and point steeper up. Decrease in frequency, it'll start pointing down and getting longer, increasing in magnitude as well. So Z has to go up. Either way, we change our frequency. What does that mean for my current? If I go above or below frequency, what happens to current? Down. Yeah. Down. Because either way I go, Z goes up or up. So current has to go down or down, right? Whether I go up or down. 
with frequency. So right now, do I have maximum current? Okay. I have maximum current because I have minimum Z. Okay. It asks for my true power. True power is which component again? Which component, Garrett, is true power? Resistor. Resistor. Do I have enough to figure that out? I can do it. I got amps, 0 0.75. What, what, is my, what is my true power here? Seven five hundred watts. Oh, it's not it's not volts times ohms, right? It's it's amps times volts, yep. or it's um, e squared divided by r or i squared r. So fifty-six point two five. Fifty-six point two five watts. So tell me this. As I go up or down in frequency, is this power at its maximum now, its minimum, or somewhere in the middle? The true power across the resistor. It's its maximum if you have max current. Exactly. Because power, because yeah. power equals E times I. And we already established that well, we, we didn't go through the whole voltage thing, but voltage is at its highest here on the resistor. At any other frequency, it has to share some of the voltage with one of these two, because that's all the voltage available. It's got to share it with the difference. But if my current is maxed, power is going to be maxed. So voltage is a little harder to see because that voltage part is a little bit relative this, relative that. So if power, does power also equal I squared R? Is that correct for power? I squared R, does R stay the same, the 100 ohms, regardless of what my frequency does? So if R stays the same, whenever current is max, power's got to be max, okay? So we hit maximum power there, okay? And then they talk about these half power points. And if, I want to give you a picture in your mind, right? I don't know that anybody has a vehicle with one of them old AM, FM radios in it, you know, where you actually turn a dial. Anybody got a vehicle where you actually turn a dial? Mm -hmm. Not to see digital numbers, right? I can turn a dial, but I see digital. But you got something where you're moving a dial across, right? Yeah, it doesn't work because it's in a 69 Nova, but it's still there. <laughs> okay. It still Nova. physically moves the arm. The, the old Spanish, Nova, no go. Yeah. Okay. So, this one goes, I'm trying. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 <laughs> keep, keep her running, and get her going. I saw a pretty cool old car the other, uh, just yesterday when I was out on a walk with my mom. And, and, but when you're tuning in those old stations, I'm sure you guys have mostly seen them, right? You hear that little static as you're getting in, and then the sound gets real good right there. And the sound is good for a little bit, and then you go too far, you get static. Until you go along and you get the next station, same pattern. But occasionally, especially you're driving on a road trip somewhere, you're listening to one station and another one starts coming in a little bit, right? Depending on the hilltops, you're getting different towns hitting you. So they're kind of overlapping a little. But there's this point that there's a sweet spot for each station. And I'm gonna relate that to half power points because each station, they're based on different frequencies, okay? And there's a couple different AM, FM are different. We're not gonna get into that. But I can change, because of my resonant frequency formula, I could either change the frequencies, or if I change the actual capacitance, these farads, or the henrys, that would change the frequency that it's resonant. Is that correct? Right, it's a combination of frequency, inductance, and capacitance. So if I change any one of those, I change the resonant frequency, right? I, I, I change where the power points are. So just a picture is that the old radio stations, right, what I've got is a capacitor. Remember we could do a capacitor where you had something like this, varying the amount of capacitance. And some old radios would take that, it might not just be one sheet on the other, they might have two, and the capacitors are overlapped in layers. So you may have a bunch of layers, and what your dial is doing is turning the capacitor like this to change the amount of capacitance and it's changing at which frequency. 
going to change your resonant frequency. So as you move that capacitor back and forward, it's saying at this frequency, most of the power goes across the resistor. And then I move the capacitance, and it's another frequency where most of the power goes across the resistor, i.e. getting to my speaker and getting my speaker bouncing. So that's, that's, that's where those come in. Now we're electricians, we're not electronics techs. There's a big difference. So this isn't hugely in our area, but it's that principle we're trying to figure out. So what they refer to as these half power points. So if I've got a chart here that is my, um, uh, where am I gonna go like here? I'm gonna go like this. So this is my current. And this is my frequencies. That's resonant frequency, zero, infinity here, right? And that's where our chart goes, from zero to infinity. Max current in series is a resonant frequency. Now, if I lower the frequency, the current goes down because the Z it increases in magnitude, either direction. So we come down and we have these things here. That we're going to call F1 and F2. The lower half power point and half power point. Because right now, the power here and the power here cancel each other out. But as we start getting a difference either up or down, the power is shared between the resistor and the net reactors. Okay? So we get these half power points. And what is that called from this frequency to this? It's called my bandwidth. Right, we hear the term bandwidth bandied around all over the place. That's the, the width of the, when I'm thinking of the radio, that's the width of the band, the range of frequencies where I'm going to get at least half the power on the resistor. Here I get all the power on the resistor, but I can still listen to the music if I'm getting down to as low as half the power on the resistor, or half the power on the resistor this way, if we think of it very simplistically like that. So how do I find those out? And where we look for that is some of these formulas on the bottom. You guys picked this up great last week and have it with you. Great, if you need another copy, I got them right up here. Come grab one if you need it. But we've got these here. So my bandwidth is a concept of resonant frequency. Make sure I don't mix it up over Q. How do I figure out what my bandwidth is? The bandwidth Uh oh, do you guys remember what Q is? It's what? Oh, oh, when you get into physics or something? Okay, yeah, yeah, we're not going into physics. We're not Christians. Don't scare us. Don't scare us out of here. Yeah, but, um, right. Well, yeah, I guess your radio could get hot. If your radio gets too hot, jump out of that car. Just don't, don't yeah. Um, but Q, remember, was kind of a quality of an inductor. It's, it's XL over R. It's a definition we're using it for it. XL over R, and it had to do with, is it really, do, can I ignore the resistance? Is it as close as I can get to a pure inductor? That's what it was. So we're going to go with Q equals, we could delve into these, but like I said, it's, it's going out of the range of most of our electrical work, going more into electronics. So with these two formulas, XL over R being Q, sliding that Q in here with my resonant frequency, can I figure out my bandwidth? Try and do that and, and, and yell it out if you, if you get that bandwidth one.
You got what? Oh, you know why you got 0.265? It would be 0.265 megahertz. You with me? Because if you take this, you can do 2.056, but your answer is going to come out in megahertz. But if you put in 2 million something, then your answer is going to come out in, um, in hertz. Okay? Let me just slide just close, just in case anyone check the glare on the board. So these are the numbers we should have gotten for this. 